Good morning and welcome to the Westchester Veterans of Foreign Wars 2024 Memorial Day service. My name is Trent Emenecker and I'll be the MC for today's ceremony. Before going any further, I want to thank the many people who invested a lot of time and energy in planning and executing this, many of whom are now here working for our police, for the township staff on a day when the rest of us have off. So I want to let everyone know who is involved in planning how much we do appreciate the work and effort you put into this. On Memorial Day in homes, places like this across the nation, we pause to remember those who sacrificed their lives in service to our country. Today, we're honored to have on stage with us six Grand Marshals. In the past, we've only had one, but this year we wanted to try and do things a little differently. We realized that many veterans in our community are aging and we wanted to make sure we honored them appropriately before it became too late. In addition, we know that there's no one veteran demographic. And so in an attempt to better establish bonds across veterans of different ages, we also invited two veterans of our much more recent foreign wars to participate with us on stage today. Before going any further, I'd like to ask for some audience participation. If you're a veteran of World War II, could you raise your hand? If you're a Korean War veteran, could you raise your hand? If you're a veteran of Vietnam, please raise your hand. Keep them up. If you're a Gulf War veteran, please raise your hand. If you're an Iraq or Afghanistan veteran, please raise your hand. If you're a veteran who served in peacetime or in any other conflict that I haven't mentioned, could you please raise your hand? Thank you. Now, if you're a family member of someone who served in the armed forces or a veteran, I would like the family members to raise their hands as well. So even though there's a lot of veterans here, you can see that our families and the ones who love us outnumber us. And I appreciate that y'all are here for, for your support. To all the veterans that would just raise your hand, I would encourage you, if you're not already an active member in the VFW or Legion in our community, to join and become involved. I can only speak from my personal experience, but it has been something that I have found extremely rewarding to be able to share time and fellowship with people who have a common understanding of military service that I do. Now, Memorial Day is here to honor those who died in service to our country. If you or a relative or a friend of someone who died in service to our country in any conflict that we've just named, if you could please raise your hand. Thank you. I ask for the hand raising today to show two things. One, how widespread service and sacrifice to and for our country is, and the depth that it penetrates into our community here today. It's part of so many of our lives and while we may not always think about it, we know that it's something that's present in our community. Before going any further in the ceremony, I want to invite all veterans and their families in attendance today to come to a cookout at the VFW Post Home immediately after the ceremony. The Post Home is just below the post office on Cincinnati Dayton. We'll have hamburgers, drinks. You're welcome to come up and share some fellowship time. And now it's my distinct honor to introduce the marshals for our parade today. Rand, could you please stand? Rand Dives joined the United States Navy in 1969, serving for four years on active duty and six years in the reserves, leaving service as a petty officer second class. He served in Da Nang, Vietnam, on the USS Howard W. Gilmore, and with Naval Reserve Training Center, Fort Custis, Michigan, excuse me, Fort Custer, Michigan. In his civilian career, he worked in all aspects of the pest control industry as an owner operator for 47 years. He's the past president of Ohio Pest Management. Married for 56 years, he has two children and five grandchildren. Thank you. Chuck, please stand. Chuck Miller joined the Air Force in 1961. As a pilot, he flew the DC-3, the EC-47, the KC-135, and the Boeing 707 accumulating more than 7,600 flight hours. 
He served in Vietnam with the Strategic Air Command, the Royal Canadian Air Force, and with Air Force Logistics Command. He retired in 1981 as a Lieutenant Colonel and lives in Westchester with his wife, Pat. Julian McFadden enlisted in the Marine Corps in 2007, immediately after high school. In 2008, he deployed to Iraq. In 2009, he deployed to Marja, Afghanistan as a team leader in support of the largest United States ground offensive since Vietnam. Upon returning home from Afghanistan in 2010, he volunteered for a third and final combat tour in Afghanistan, where he led a squad of 13 Marines and one corpsman. Over his three combat deployments, he supported over 3,000 foot patrols. He left active duty as a corporal and now lives in Westchester with his wife and two children. Bill, please stand. Bill joined the Navy in August of 1960. He joined the submarine force and served on the USS Torsk and the USS Segundo, operating throughout the Western Pacific and on patrol in the China Sea. He served on active duty for five years, an additional 21 years in the reserves, before retiring in 1986. As a civilian, he worked at Procter & Gamble as a facilities engineer for 30 years. Dean, please stand. Dean joined the Ohio National Guard while still in high school, and then shortly after enlisted in the United States Air Force. He became an electronics technician, eventually specializing in detecting listening devices. He was stationed in Florida, Puerto Rico, Texas, Mississippi, Massachusetts, California, Washington, D.C., West, West Germany, and South Korea, and retired after 22 years of service, where he then began work at GE Aircraft Engines. As a volunteer in our community, he served as a firefighter at EMT with the Liberty Township Volunteer Fire Department, as a volunteer for great parks of Hamilton County, with the Boys and Girls Club and many other similar activities. Zach, please stand. Zach Pace served in the United States Army for five years where he deployed to both Iraq and Afghanistan. He left active duty as a staff sergeant. He's been a resident of Westchester for nine years. He and his wife Kelly have three children, Bree who is 16, Molly who is 10, and Nolan who is eight. He's also a Butler County veteran mentor. Thank you, Zach. I also want to make note of our other honored guests here today, and I'd ask that you hold your applause until the end. Our VFW chaplain, Mark Applegate. Our color guard. The members of Westchester VFW Post 7696 the members of American Legion Post 681, the Westchester Police Department, the Westchester Fire Department, and all of the elected leadership from our community who came out to participate in the parade today. A round of applause for all our guests. And now our invocation led by Mark Applegate. Uh, with heads uncovered, please join me in an attitude of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we have gathered together this Memorial Day 2024, let us honor the service and sacrifice of our brothers and sisters that gave their lives in service to our nation. It is because of these good men and women who gave their last breath in defense of our nation, our freedom, and our children's future that we are able to stand here today. We also ask that you bless everyone assembled here today as we pay our respects and grant us the strength to rise to the challenge of our time to preserve our way of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Freedom is not free as demonstrated by the many souls that have perished defending the United States of America throughout our history. We ask that you guide us in living a life worthy of their sacrifice. Amen. Thank you, Mark. The Color Guard team, led by Frank Lambert, will raise the national, the American flag, and then lower it to half mast in honor of the American fighting men and women who have given the ultimate sacrifice and devotion to our country. 
The national anthem will be presented by the Lakota West Band. We will now present memorial wreaths. Grand Marshals, if you are able, please descend and assemble in front of the memorial wreaths. The memorial wreath honoring all of our fallen heroes is being placed by Sydney Sobel's family. Her mother Stephanie, her father Chris, her grandmother Eileen, and her grandfather Paul. We will now present seven memorial wreaths honoring those unknown service members who gave their lives in service to our country. The first will be presented by Rand Dodds along with Trail Life Ohio 1031. Heritage Girls, Ohio, 3124. The third will be presented by Julia McFadden, along with Scouts PSA Troop 974 and Troop 1974.
Dean Schwartz and American Heritage Girls, Ohio, 2513. Zach Pace and pack 955. Flight Tri State, along with the FW Post 7696 Commander Mike Parker. Now we'll have Amazing Grace presented by the Cincinnati Caledonia Pipes and Drums.
now, it's my distinct privilege to introduce our featured speaker for today, Sydney Sobel. She was invited to speak after a trip to Arlington Cemetery that Mike Barker, post commander for VFW Post 7696, was on as a chaperone. While there, Mike discovered her personal connection to, the, to Memorial Day. Sydney's a 2024 graduate of Lakota East. In addition to working and hanging out with her friends, she's a member of the Lakota East Veterans Club, participating with Honor Flight Welcome Home and other similar activities. During her final year of high school, she attended the University of Cincinnati to take CCP classes. In general, she loves to help others. And with that, I'd like to introduce Sydney. Hello and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sydney Sobel, and I was asked to speak today about what Memorial Day means to me. I would first like to apologize if my body fills with goosebumps or if I start to tear up or cry. Memorial Day for me means reflecting on those memories of those. Memorial Day for me means reflecting on those memories of those who have fought for this country, giving each and every one of us our freedom to respect the lives that were fought and lost both past and present. When I was younger, we visited my dad's cousin, whose husband, Chief Petty Officer Dave, Michaels, Dave Michael Collins, who was a Navy SEAL. Even though I didn't know him well because he was always on a mission, he is still family and very close to my heart. He had demonstrated skill and bravery in the conduct of 64 combat convoys and 72 secret operations. He was in direct support of Operation Iraqi Freedom from January 1st, 2005 to April 15th, 2005. After all his tours, he returned home suffering from a TBI, which is a traumatic brain injury, which he would later succumb to. His final resting place is at Arlington National Cemetery in Washington, D.C. Dave's wife, Jennifer, continues today to fight for research with organizations helping veterans with traumatic brain injuries. I was lucky enough to be able to pay my respects to Dave as I got older with my family, then again this past November with the Lakota East High School Veterans Network Club and the East Choir on our trip to Washington, D.C. for the annual Parade of Heroes. During this trip, we had visited Arlington National Cemetery where Mr. Barker, the commander of the Westchester VFW and husband of Sally Barker, who is the Veterans Club organizer, was joined with our tour guide, Jamal Freeman, who is also serving in the Navy. They had performed a private military ceremony for my cousin at his grave. All my classmates were there to observe and put pennies on his headstone. This meant a lot to me, not only because it was emotional and respectful, but also because Jamal was self, selfless enough to go where his buddy's graves were, that Jamal had even said earlier that day, I still cannot go visit them because it gets too emotional. And even closer to home, my grandfather, Paul Sobel, is a veteran of the Vietnam War. I am more proud of him and all that he has fought for for the war and my freedom. It pains me to think of how the Vietnam War, ver the Vietnam War veterans were treated when they had returned home. They were yelled at, spat on, and shamed yet they didn't even have a choice to go to war because most of them were drafted. I have enjoyed my time with the Lakota East Veterans Network Club. I have enjoyed my time with the Lakota East High School Veterans Club during high school. <laughs> As we worked closely with the veterans throughout the community, the trip to Washington, Washington D.C. and volunteering to help the VFW. As I continue my journey, journey to pursue a degree in nursing through Ohio University, I plan to continue supporting the veterans through, throughout the United States. I would do anything to shake the hands of those who have served our country and tell them thank you individually. Just thinking about what all veterans have experienced causes chills through my body and my heart to break. So I'd like
I'd like to thank you all for your service. Thank you, Sydney. Memorial Day is an emotional day for a lot of us. Veterans, family members, friends, and I think it's important to remember why. Okay, we just heard that very awkwardly from Sydney. We will now have a rifle volley. Color Guard Captain, perform your duties. Taps was played by Tony Yucko and Echo Taps by a member of the Lakota West Band. An hour of benediction. With heads uncovered and bowed in tribute to our fallen comrades, we bring this gathering to a close. Our Heavenly Father, let us depart in peace with love for our families, friends, and neighbors. Please be kind and compassionate to all you come in contact with as everyone may be fighting a battle that you know nothing about. For those that have lost a loved one while serving our country, we offer a special prayer for strength and peace on this Memorial Day. Amen. Thank you for joining us today to honor our fallen heroes. May God bless them, and may God bless America. As a reminder, we invite all veterans and their families to join us now at the Post Home for a Cookout. This concludes our ceremony.